How's it go, Lot? Hello, everybody. Welcome uh, to Waited to Win. Good to have you all with us. And we promise you to all of you follow our WhatsApp group and uh, that Wait, Waited to Win show that we'll have a special announcement coming soon. And we do certainly tonight. And uh, you've got some new faces on the screen. Um, of course, uh, perhaps a stranger to some, uh, certainly not a stranger to, to most, is uh, Mike DeCock. Uh, I'll say that because uh, where haven't you been in the world, Michael? Just yet. Any place? Have you been to oh, Lebanon? There's a lot yet? of places I want to been, go, Clark. Have you been to Lebanon yet? I haven't. And my good mate Tony Nasser tells me before I die, I've got to go there. You have to go. So, but I have to take him as a tour guide. Nothing wrong. <laughs> Nothing wrong. Okay. Well, I'll say that uh, because it is one of the most beautiful places. And listen, you've been all over the world, especially with racing, etc., and conquering. Uh, with um, major uh, uh, horse names that um, one can go back to the late 80s and, and talk about what, uh, what you, your, your successful journey was all about. The other gentleman on the show, um, and then I'll bring Darren and uh, Daryl, is, is Jonathan Bloomberg from uh, Betway. And um, those who've been around Turfentine Racecourse or the different racecourses or in racing will know who Jonathan is. Those that perhaps have been watching from the sidelines maybe don't know who he is. So, Johnny, welcome to Waited to Win. It's nice to have you on our show. Yeah, thank you, Claude. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Darren. And obviously, how's it to Mark? Um, yeah, great to be uh, on your show this evening and obviously to, uh, you know, so make a, a great announcement in terms of Betway and uh, Mark the Cock. Um, yeah, and I think uh, at, at the outset, let me also thank you guys for the type of work that you guys are doing in an industry that needs uh, help, um, it needs some goodwill, and I think punters need some guidance. It was only our pleasure. And of course, we saw the gap in the market a little while ago to get to the, uh, the patrons on a weekend by weekend basis, because that's where we think it peaks the most. And the interest is, uh, is always there. And it's something that we want to continue doing. And we'll talk to you about that just throughout the show with Mike and what the association is. Daryl and Darren, you've obviously uh, looked at the card tomorrow. So let me start with you, Daryl. Um, is it exciting, uh, competitive, exciting, money to be made? How do you see it? Uh, Clyde, I think the pick six is the play. If you can get a portion of it, you'll work, walk away a very happy man or punter. Um, but I think we've got a, some exciting special markets to chat about as we go along through the card with Betway. Uh, some new bets that punters won't be aware of. And uh, yeah, so let's chat as we go through the card. Yeah, Darren, I mean, uh, you're being the professional punter every day and watch every race that takes place every day of the year. Um, You've obviously studied the card in depth, and now with Betway on board, as Darren, as Daryl has alluded to, there's uh, one or two exciting bets that are coming out that we'll we'll certainly find out about now. Yes, we've got some great bets on Betway at the moment. Um, we'll we'll chat about that a bit later, but I look forward to tomorrow's card in Cape Town as well. Uh, we see the return of Cormini Dunn. Uh, Rascalian obviously looks the main danger, but um, yeah, a very nice card both both centres. Okay, let me ask you, um, just with regards to Johnny, let's, I, I want to talk about Betway. That's our disclaimer, as you know. Just to, I want to talk about Betway for a moment. I mean, um, those who know it know it all over the world uh, that they had, you, you play a part somewhere in the world. I mean, you know, Betway hasn't, it's not, you're not just born in South Africa. It's a brand that was uh, born on the other side of the sea and you've just spread your wings everywhere. Yeah, yeah. correct, Clyde. I think... Um... Yeah, if you look at us, obviously, South Africa and, 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 and many countries throughout Africa, um, you have a look at the UK, Portugal, France, um, various other countries in Europe. And obviously, we branched out and headed into the US where we live now. Um, so, yeah, exciting business, exciting growth uh, that we've seen over the last couple of years. Uh, by no means are we new. Yes, we knew in horse racing in South Africa. But I think that's just been a natural progression. I think, you know, we, we cut our teeth, uh, you know, for want of a better phrase, in terms of uh, uh, the soccer market in South Africa, obviously branching then out into to, to cricket, rugby, etc. Um, and obviously some, some great associations in terms of, of pro tiers, in terms of the, uh, um, the spring box that uh, you might have seen recently. So... I think natural progression, um, we knew in terms of the space, as I reiterate, uh, we're definitely here to learn. Um, we want to deliver a product to the consumer that um, has value in their eyes. Um, and ultimately, we'll evolve it as we go. I mean, being part of an in international brand uh, gives us the opportunity to offer products uh, in the horse racing space that we do offer in other international markets where we uh, you know, lay horse racing bets, i.e. the UK. 
And, and I want to ask Michael, just to bring you, Mark, I mean, you've had an opportunity to be part of uh, major brands in your lifetime. I mean, you've been all over the world. You've been associated with the very best. And um, there's an announcement to make tonight through Betway and yourself. Yes, well, I mean, obviously, the, 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 we, we're now having an association um, whereby um, I'm going to be an ambassador for, for Betway, one of many that they do have. And let me say at the outset, Clyde, it's an absolute honor and a privilege for myself and the stable to be involved with them. Uh, I like what they do. Um, I've waited a long time for, for something like this. And when they came, for me, I think it came to speak to me, I think it, it took me five seconds to make up my mind. Um, this is a real deal sponsorship. I love what they're doing at grassroots, what they're doing, what they're putting back into the game. It's not just about, let's face it, they're in business. They're not the Red Cross. They're not there to uh, not to make money, but they're very happy to put it back in and back in at the right level, you know, at grassroots level, uh, i.e. the grooms, the stables, soccer teams. Um, and it, it's a formula that works. And, and it's really, I can see even with my grooms uh, talking to them now that, that, you know, the buzz about them and uh, especially with the soccer, they're getting their soccer kit this week. Lucas Trodebe is coming to give them the kit. I mean, that is, for them, it's like, it's like the second coming. So this is the kind of thing that, that Betway do. This is the kind of thing I'm really, I want to be associated with. Plus the fact that they are going to be putting back money into the tote. That for me is everything, really. At the end of the day, this industry needs a, is, is on life support. Uh, and they are going to assist in helping the stakes get to the levels that we were used to and better by putting the money back into the type the type bet. Yeah, and for those who don't understand it, Mark, you're obviously referring to the open bet for which a, a court case was lost, I don't know how many years ago, 20 years ago, uh, where um, the uh, Association of Bookmakers had won the right to lay the open bet, et cetera. And so I suppose it's the choice of the bookmaker on the other side, whether he does or whether he doesn't. And Johnny, you as Betway have made a decision um, that you're, you're not going to be laying the open bet on the tote in any form whatsoever. And what that means for some of the owners um, that, that bet on a day-by-day on a, on a day -day basis and uh, punters for that matter is if you're taking your pick six or your jackpot or your place accumulator, and correct me if I'm wrong, et cetera, and you're not doing it through the directly through the tote, uh, there's a possibility, a big possibility, um, that it's not coming back into the tote. And Mark's making reference to the fact that if it doesn't come back through the tote, there's no way your prize money can grow. And uh, the conscious decision that you guys have made at bookmakers is there's no choice. If you're having a tote bet with us, it's coming through the tote. Is that correct? You're 100% uh, correct, Claude. I think, look, let me at the outset say our product offering at the moment is strictly fixed odds as we stand. We're busy in final stages in terms of integrating the tote, which will be uh, uh, available as soon as everything is completed. But to back up what you're saying, we've taken a it's, a, it's it's not even a unanimous decision. It's just, it's a simple decision. You know, whatever bets are struck via Betway out of South African uh, uh, punters' wallets is going directly into the tote. I think what's auspicious in this whole thing for, for me, um, you know, and, and obviously, you know, having been a part of racing for many years and, and, and obviously knowing Mark for many, many years is, uh, you know, we're a new brand in South Africa in terms of horse racing. Um, we, we are lucky and privileged enough to have an association with Mark de Kock, as well as be able to call him an ambassador. I think um, in terms of the uplifting of the stable and what we're going to do in terms of uh, the South African groom schools and, uh, um, you know, trying to uplift, um, yeah, as Mark says, it, it, the, gra the grassroots stuff is, is, is what the game really needs. But when we do go live with, with the tote, it is definitely 100% going in. And, I'm, you know, I must make special mention at this point in terms of, you know, all the, uh, um, should I say, the, the contact and the conversation that we've had around uh, uh, things with for racing. Um, you know, I think in Fundi, uh, Sitebe and, and Colin Gordon, you, you've got, you, well, A, in Colin, you've got a guy who's got some, some history in terms of horse racing background. But in terms of Fundi and, you know, I've known her pre-4 uh, uh, racing, I think 
I think we are outside of the funding that's been secured. We truly, truly blessed to have people at the helm now driving the ship that actually want things to succeed. And I have no doubt that they will succeed. But ultimately, as Mark says, I think everything's going to hinge on whether we get the toad pools big enough that the game of horse racing in South Africa would, you know, live longer than 2024, 2025, which we hope it does. So we're going to play our part, um, you know, and, and, I, and I hope, uh, you know, the, the rest of the, 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 the community toes the line. Look, I think, uh, uh, Mark, you've been around now in this for, for a while, and I think that uh, through the assessment of where the open bet money is at the moment and where it lies right now, um, you one can have a wild guess at it, I guess, but, but in, to a certain extent, perhaps there's a, you know, there's a more focused figure on what the number is that's missing from the tote uh, with the money not coming back through the tote. Would I be out of line to say that perhaps two billion rand is missing that's not coming back into the tote at the moment, Mark, in your, in your opinion? Look, from what I'm told by all the all the fundies and uh, and and the, you know the real the betting gurus, yes, um, I think that is a fair assessment. Uh, anything between a, a billion and two, and then if one just turns, you know, just goes back there in terms of percentages, take out what flows to states and all that kind of thing. I mean, where would we be in states, Cloud? We could be most definitely double for what what we're we're at at the moment. Yeah, and as we said earlier on, we, we we're on life support. We need that. And I, I mean, I can understand you were part of that in the, in, in the past. Um, there was this fight for the bookmaker that didn't need to happen. I, you know, I think most of them are genuine racing men and they are, and they, and they really, they understand that the game is ailing. But I, I also see the, the mistrust of the industry, but they've got to realize that four racing is not the past. Four racing is the future. And four racing is showing that now, I mean, this, this deal with Bentway, racing serious about growing the tote yeah. and and the guys need to trust in them get a new trust and you know as i said to you i do understand where it's coming the fight and you know the guys that were in charge before i mean it was well, just like you know a bull in a china shop and they hurt our industry bad and you look where we are today but now we've got a breath of fresh air which is betway and they are um they are addressing that and that's fantastic, and hopefully they'll be a good example to the other guys. Well, that, that's that's the point. Is is you know the the intention of Betway is ultimately to get a hundred percent of their money back into the tote, and whether or not you know anybody else from that perspective is willing to do so. In other words, forego whatever the takeout is that they're making on the open bet, which may be anything between I don't know fifteen and twenty percent. And how does one you know match that? But that I suppose is a discussion that you guys will have. Your work out how to get the rest of the guys on board. And absolutely right. The sort of key survival to racing now is predominantly the tote. I think it's 90% of, of, of what your aim revenue will be. And that's really where everybody wants to end up. And it's fantastic that Betway have come to the party because they are a huge brand worldwide and that they are going to put their shoulders to the wheel with you and the team, etc., which is great. And I want to bring Johnny in here because this is the look and feel of the, of the Betway site as, as to when you log in, well, you know what the opportunities are, and and you've mentioned you were you know you're the proud sponsors of the of the of the Springboks and and multiple uh, other big brands etc. as well. But Daryl and Darren have been on the site, Mark, just so that you know, and they've been studying and looking, and and they're quite excited about what the offering is. Something unique, different. That there's a variety of 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 of, uh, of stuff one can really have a bet on uh, if they if if that's what uh, tickles their fancy. But that you're introducing new bet types in racing, um, I think that's a nice, you know, that's a that's that's a that's a big thumbs up. Yeah, Very innovative and it, and it, yeah, and, it, and it's fantastic to see the way they're thinking. Yeah, but I think Clyde, to the point, I think it's probably the benefit of us being part of a global uh, global business. You know, these are these are kind of betting opportunities that are widely available in the UK. You know, widely available in in, in in jurisdictions where there there is such a product. Um, you know, I, I believe it might take some time in terms of the the local racing public to to take up these offerings and fully understand them. But I think there's um, yeah, I, you know, like you say, there's some exciting offerings, and I think um, you know, there's more to come. Let's put it that way. I think you know, important to say, this is not the end product. This is the starting product. There's a lot still to come. 
Yeah. And there's something we're going to talk about now called the insure bet. Now, and I'll bring the guys in here, uh, Daryl and Darren. Um, so, Johnny, let me start with you with this insure bet because I havenven't heard about it before. So, maybe we just want to elaborate. The guy logs in, he sets up his account, he goes to horse racing, starts, he has a bet, and he sees something there called the insure bet. What exactly is he doing by insuring his bet? So currently that insure bet is figured under the um, special markets icon and simply put the insure bet is available either on insure bet two places or insure bet three place market. Simply what it is, is you're taking a skinnier price about a horse, but insuring yourself in the case of insure bet two places, meaning if the horse ran second, we refund you your stake. It's almost, it's voided. If you've taken insure bet three places will obviously be the derivative price would obviously be of a lower value than insure bet two places exact same again your horse finished second or third and didn't win you get your stake back ultimately protecting the punter's wallet um hopefully allow him to play for a lot longer but um i think it's a thinking man's bet Clyde. i think the fact of the matter is when you found a horse at four or five to one that you know you you believe you you do fancy but you know there's one or two uh, um horses that you feel a strong opposition in the race it's an interesting bet type um i, I think um yeah I, you know i've seen yeah horses have quietly been live on our site for the last uh, eight to ten days and i've seen you know what i would call a, a shrewd type of punters engaging in these type of bets yeah yeah daryl i just want to i'm going to go and let's get into the heart of it now quickly uh, bring you in you and darren i'll start with you daryl you've been through the site uh, you've looked at it and so far, what's what's intrigued you? Um, Clyde, yeah, obviously it's a different format to uh, the other websites out there. So, but once you start navigating it, it's very user friendly. And what's caught my eye is a bet to run strictly second. Now, if you were, if your horse happens to win, you're going to lose because it hasn't run second. And the odds on that look fantastic. Along with the places market, I think the place market is very, very competitive. If I've looked at the local bookmakers, I think Betway probably have the edge with regards to betting percentages. So, yeah, I'm excited to, to log on tomorrow morning and uh, just wait for the special markets to load closer to race day. I think they only go up more or less around about 11 o'clock. I think the, the, the market itself goes up at 10, but the special markets go Go up a little bit later, and I'm excited to see what they're going to be offering for tomorrow's racing. Okay, so that so that market will come out a couple of hours before. And uh, and Daryl, you've been in there too. I mean, Darren. Yes, I've there. I've seen the site. Um, it's very user friendly. Um, I found that the insure bet was a fantastic bet. Um, especially if you have a horse at around five to one, six to one, and they're offering you uh, a little a little bit less uh, in the market. But if you run second or third, you're getting a refund on your stake, which is fantastic, especially for punters that often back second place runners or whatever. And uh, their betting percentages are great. I've compared their odds to um, other betting sites and they are very competitive. And I also found on sports with uh, soccer, the cash out option. Uh, if you have a, a three-legged multiple and you're running in one leg left to go and uh, they'll give you a cash out amount, um, in case you, you don't want to continue with the bet. So that's also a great bet. And then the second place bets, I mean, often you'll find a, a hot favorite in the race and uh, 10 to one bar one, and you fancy a horse to run second, uh, you're also getting great value. Okay, excellent. So, and Johnny, that's, uh, the, the cash out bet with racing, that's what come in time, right? Yeah, I, I, I would suspect you could wait for that to evolve. As I, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to just reiterate: this is this is the starting point. We 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 are not coming to 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 the racing community in South Africa to say we we you know we are the finished product or we are the best. Uh, what I can tell you is this product will evolve. Um, it will get better as we go. We are open to feedback. We are open to criticism. Um, we're here for the long term, guys. Uh, whatever, in a, whichever way we can help or better the user experience, we will make it happen. Just getting, uh, just to touch on that uh, bet to run second. I mean, can you imagine if Gold um, Dean Maroon's horse? Do you remember Golden Man? Didn't yes. that run about twenty-two seconds in his career? Very. Yes. yes. He never have backed so many a horse so many times for a win. We can even go back to the Buddy Maroon days of Pumpkin Pie. 
<laughs> she, well, I think she broke a maiden in her hundred and hundred and first attempt, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, she was always in that second box. Yeah, well, maybe you've got a few pumpkin pies for us uh, on the, the weekend. Don't forget our, our WhatsApp number, 0691643272. Um, Clyde, with, yes. I just want to touch on, on this WhatsApp group. Now, we heard uh, Mark mention that Lucas Radeva is going to, the groups are going to be meeting their hero. Well, if you happen to join this WhatsApp group, and uh, you might be spending a day on the on the golf course with your hero, Mark the Cock, or at a dinner one day. You never know. So, um, bring the cash. Yeah. Bring the cash, Michael. Is that right? Eh? Those bring are you cash. Might bring. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, there used right. to be the old key bet. The key bet was quite popular. I mean, yes. this is the same thing, similar thing, isn't it? Norman Kieser. 100%. Yeah. Correct, yeah. Okay, so 069, uh, Michael, please put in your phone. 069 <laughs> Join the waiter to win WhatsApp Privé. So you never know, you might get a win a prize. You play around the golf with uh, with some big guys. And listen, a table would, that is... At would the be an club. absolute pleasure. Table at the at Queen's Plate, maybe. A table at the Met. And uh, now that you're the ambassador to Betway, we can get your information shared with the guys on the group. It, uh, it's it's going to be exciting. Tomorrow, just a turf and team so that you know, it, um, there was a bit of rain in front of Bell Park Way, I can tell you that, but um, tonight, hopefully it stays away from turf and team. Uh, there's a two metre spur on the, at the 700 metre mark. Um, as far as rainfall is concerned, uh, you'll notice that uh, irrigation in the last, uh, let's just get that out of the way and you can have a look at it. It shows the last 24 hours, nil, seven days, 12 mils. So um, your pen reading's on 21. So it's, it's a lovely track to race on um, at Turf and Tea. Two scratchings I've got to date so far. Race five, scratch the three. And race eight, number three, is out by running Mr. Flood. And that takes us straight into the betting of the fourth race where War of Athena and Rain in Holland dominate here. This is going to be very, very interesting uh, between the two. And um, the question, I suppose, and I'm going to start with, uh, with Darren, is whether or not War of Athena can give us, what is it, 10 kilos to, to Rain in Holland? Well, she's proven herself at the highest level. And, you know, Warvathina, she's competitive from 1,200 up to 2,400. She's got an amazing turn of foot. And when I studied the form of, uh, the form of Rain, in, Rain in Holland, um, when I looked at what she's beaten, uh, horses like Smorgasbord, who's disappointed since then, led a breed and didn't do too much after that. Uh, last time I beat Kayleen, Kayleen ran second last in the Phillies Championship. So that form isn't standing up too strong. And I think War of Athena, I think she's going to make a winning return. I really am confident. Um, even if she's not 100% fit, I think her class is going to carry her through in this lineup. So for me, War of Athena over Rain in Holland, I can't see much else getting into action. Max Race, those two, but War of Athena, your first choice. So, Carol, you the same? Yeah, Clyde, I think the, the pace is going to be honest of you. Um, Obviously, Wara of Athena, a triple tiara winner. She followed that up after a long season with running third in the Garden Province. Uh, she achieved her rating over a mile, so she's, it's not like she's ineffective over the 1,400, but she is obviously better a furlong or two um, longer. So I just want to ask Clyde, uh, I want to ask Mark, what, what he would think of sparkling water. I know we're not comparing apples with apples over here, but... Would he, would he believe sparkling water could give a filly like Clefruti 10 kilograms? How? Mm, well, it depends on the trip again. A 14 mile, no, not in my opinion. But okay. uh, she's, you know, she was, when she won the 14 the other day, she had a big, big pull at the weight. She was, I mean, she was extremely well in there. And she was fresh. I know, she, you know, uh, uh, I mean, it, I wasn't expecting a 1400 meter win, but that was, you know, sheer, sheer handicapping that that uh, weight's been in her favor that got her home there. You know, um, last year, I'm thinking Queen Supreme couldn't give War of Athena 10 kilos. War of Athena beat her when she was giving her two kilos uh, worse off than weight for age, put it that way. Yeah, so, so it's tough, uh, but but you know, War of Athena has got a hell of a lot of speed. I don't, you know, never mind. She won a triple crown. I won a fourteen. I won the two four. That filly's got a lot of speed. Yeah, and the other filly it tends to be outpaced, outpaced, and then you know, sort of comes late. Yeah, she looked dead and buried at Gravel, um, but I think with the pace being on with the uh, War of Athena, not great form lines. Yeah, 
That's the concern. Not great for lungs. So, so, Darryl, uh, so, so, you, so how do you summarize it then, based on what Michael? Yeah, I, I just believe ten kilograms is a lot of weight right. to give away, especially if this is a prep run. Um, so I'm leaning slightly towards Rain in Holland, but uh, I'm certainly not be backing either of them. And Michael, and if you had to make a choice out of the two, I know it's not your—I mean, you're studying the form; it's not your horses, etc. But they are two top horses. Yeah, they are, but I, I still, I still think um, what of Athena's. She's such a hell of a filly. I, I would, you know, not a filly I could ever back against. Um, yeah. uh, for me, Raining Holland was the third best two year old filly last year uh, on form. I'm talking about the fact that she won five, maybe swayed, swayed the panel, but certainly Sean's other filly was a much better filly on, on paper, and so was um, Desert Miracle. Johnny, uh, and let me, if and I, I ratings, can bring you. mind you, the ratings actually prove it. Yeah, I think, listen, I think you could make a case for both. I think for, for me, War of Athena, mighty, mighty impressive. High cruising speed. I think in all the races where she won, even, you know, when you look at the 2400, the, the, the triple crown, she hit the, you know, she she, she hit the front miles out. Um, yeah, I mean, really, really impressive. But I'm scared to write off Rain in Holland. I think that last run, yes, the form line is not great, but the way she came back, she couldn't run a place 350 out let alone win the race. And I, and I think to me, I think, you know, if you look at both stables, I think, you know, they played their cards. I think you've got to believe Paul Matchett, he's, he's there to win the race. He's got his pacemakers in. He's, he's ensuring there's going to be a gallop. But I think that the booking of Warren Kennedy for Sean Terry also makes a statement, in my, my opinion. Yeah, unbeaten this course in distance, and she loves the longer straight. So it's going to be a great race between the two. The fifth race on the card, we'll stay with that. Now, sound of warning is top of the boards at two to one. Uh, number six on the card, a bard of Avon at 22 to 10, and then the one winter stories at seven to two. I'll go back to, Dar to um, Darren quickly and just bring him in with regards to, to this race, because I know you like bard of Avon. I also spoke to Andrew Fortune just to get an idea, and he sounded fairly bullish. Yes, I actually spoke to Andrew last night as well. I just wanted to see the well-being of bard of Avon, and he said he's doing really well at home. Um, I think he's a better horse up the straight, um, he proved it by running second in the gold medallion behind Amberix. Uh, he's got a lovely cruising speed, this horse, and he quickens really smartly. Um, he's drawn towards the outside, which I always favor uh, at Turfontaine, especially if there's a little bit of rain around. Uh, there's always a length or two advantage towards the outside. Um, so I make Bart of Avon the best bet on the card. I'm taking my chances and I'm bankering him in the pick six. Um, a sound of warning... Over the 1,000-meter trip, she takes a little bit of time to unwind, and she comes with a late run. I just think she's going to be caught out, and Bart of Avon's going to get first run on her. Uh, horses like Winter Stories, he's drawn one. He's only had one run in the last eight months. The, the word is that he's doing really well at home, and they do fancy him. But I feel Bart of Avon's got the edge on this field, and I think he's good value at 22 to 10. Yeah. Daryl, are you siding the same? God, I'll make it very competitive. Uh, obviously, Bart of Avon, he's done nothing wrong to date. And uh, in my opinion, he was a little bit disappointing in his later start. He was weighted to win on that occasion. Uh, so slightly disappointing. I think back up the straight, might see him bounce back to his best. Sound of warning, she very impressive in the Strelitzia. She, she absolutely swooped past the opposition and put them to bed. Then she ran a, a solid second in the grade one, Alan Robertson. I just think the 1,000 meters, she'll be doing her best work late. But uh, according to the computer form, she's working extremely well. And then Winter Stories. Now, he's having his first run for the new yard. And we've seen many of uh, many of us come on in leaps and bounds since joining the Paul Peter yard. And he's weighted on top of you. He comes out best weighted. So you have to respect his chances. And if you like his chances, you have to like the Philly's chances. Winter Smoke. She's six kilograms better for a length beating. Yeah. Um, back back at the end of last year. So I thought it's very competitive. I've actually thrown all four into the pick six. Yeah, interesting. The best way to board of Avon, we might be in trouble on the ratings, but I think that uh, Dar Darren could be on, this, on the mark in terms of uh, the source's ability and uh, perhaps happy up the straight. Let's uh, ask, I'm going to come to Mark now. I know this is, uh, we've got to the Gardinia now, and let's just talk about that. But this is the 1,000 metre. It's a listed event where True to Life is top of the board to 33 to 10. Um, well, I see Lucy English is coming now to five to two. 
Uh, nine Belli Bella Chicas at 13 to 2, and then the three Anna Capri 8 to 1 for the 10. Uh, Nara. Mark, let me start with you. I see you've got the filly in, in your uh, dream of Genie. Uh, won her last start, obviously, but uh, it does seem a hot field. Hot field, she's a little out at the weights. So we're hoping to get a place with her. Um, I think Lucky's filly's been hugely impressive. So, whatever she's rated, I'm not sure what her official rating is right now. There's a massive plus sign next to it. Um, uh, I mean, her, foot, uh, her speed and her quickening of that speed is actually very, very impressive. Um, the other filly, True to Life, you know, the form is there. The ratings are there. You know exactly where you are. Lucky's filly is the unknown. So, be, be a very, very good race. Um, okay. What weights Lucky's filly got? She's got 15. How many kilos? She runs off an 88. She's got 50 yeah. kilos on her back. Yeah, and she's going to rattle. So, you know, with that kind of weight, you know, you, you know it's gonna, she's going to be hard to peg back. Um, she, you know, Lucky is not a mug, and he obviously thinks a lot of her, and that's why he's put her in here. Um, mm. She looks a proper filly. She does. She, I mean, she won very impressively. Daryl, you must have seen that victory the way she won uh, Lucy English. She won super impressively. Yeah, since returning from the layoff, she's, she, like everyone said, she's been super impressive. She actually uh, ran to a rating five pounds above her current rating because uh, they, they, she was restricted last time out. So she's a net 103. But in saying that, she is unexposed. So you can't read into her rating. Uh, mm -hmm. Clyde, true to life. She runs times as well. Eh? She runs some times. Really good times. Yeah, she, she's been super impressive. Uh, so healthy respect for her. But I've gone wide in this leg. I'm, I'm looking for a little bit of an upset. The horse number five, Mind Reader. If you just have a look at her form, she's she's having a peak run. Go back to the computer form sprint. She's a kilo and a half better off with the fairly like or mere like two to life uh, for a length and a half beating. She'll be doing her best work late. Sing for Rafa. I mean, she's obviously been contesting the highest grade last the last three starts. She's a winner of the SA Philly sprint. She ran in the grade one Mercury, the grade one post merchants. Um, on her day. She's very, very good and very hard to pass. So if she bounces well, she's raced well in fresh in the past. You can't discount her chances. And even a filly like Hello Winter Hello, I know the thousand is going to be too sharp for her, but look who she's got in her form line. She's run to the likes of Celtic Sea, Rio Carrari in the Cape. So if they go very quick and one or two fluffy lines up front, she'll be doing her best work late and could uh, uh, be the upset material in the race. I think it's a very tricky, tricky... Uh, uh, listed Gardenia stakes, but Lucky's Philly could be anything. Could be anything. Darren, I mean, uh, pick sixes, how many have you gone Have you gone wide or have you played it? Yeah, I've gone about five or six runners here. Um, two to life is the class in the race. You know, her thousand meter form, uh, she won the Tommy Hotspur. She actually beat Anna Capri by two and a quarter lengths over course and distance, and she's now six kilos better off at the weights for that victory. Uh, and then she followed that up with a good third in the computer form sprint. Um, her last start was a little bit disappointing and a previous start to that. But uh, she's had a little bit of a break. She's coming back fresh over the 1,000-meter trip. I think she she's one of the horses to beat. Um, Lucy English, I've been really impressed with this filly. Um, after a break, her two comeback wins, she, she shows a lot of gate speed and she quickens well. And with only 50 kilos on her back, uh, drawn towards the center of the track. I think she's going to rate the horse to beat. Uh, True to life's got to give her nine and a half kilos. It's a lot of weight. I know it's only a thousand meter trip, but um, I'm throwing those two in as my first two selections. And then mind reader, you know, if you go back to the computer form sprint, uh, she was about two lengths off True to life. And she's had the two comeback runs. It's her third run after a break. Um, good last run uh, behind uh, Elysian Chief. Um, and I think she's my third choice. I've also thrown in Nara. Uh, she's a little bit in and out. Um, on her day, she's really speedy, and she, she can continue all the way to the winning post. And then sometimes she throws in the towel at the 200-meter mark. So it depends which Nara rocks up, but I wouldn't exclude her with only 54 kilos and drawn on the stand side of the track. Those are my first four picks. Okay, I'm going to ask Mike about sparkling water in a moment. Johnny, I know you're a bipod player. What, uh, what, how do we end the bipod here, the sixth race? What are we doing, Bapot? Yeah, in the yeah. I think I think you guys have pretty much touched on everything. Yeah, I must 
obviously concur. I think Lucy English been tremendously impressive. Those kind of times or 58 and 60 kilos, running or 50 kilos, um, massive, massive runner. You know, when looking at this race, the first thing that struck me, you're probably going to have five horses in a line going through the 600 meter, uh, the 600 meter mark. And I think, um, yeah, I, I worry how that may just play out. And I also worry how, in terms of, you know, I would have preferred mind reader drawn a little bit uh, uh, higher up. Um, I'm a little bit loath to include the, the low numbers. You know, I think that's the kind of the horse that might enjoy um, the great lead that she will enjoy in terms of having the, the, those pacemakers up there. I have to definitely side with Lucy English, but I think, yeah, I think Mind Reader uh, could be my horse to, to, to fill the second spot. Okay. Um, a little bit concerned in terms of the prep of, 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 of some of the other horses in, in terms of True to Life, Tropic uh, Sun, Hello Winter Hello, where they are and what they're going for. Mm. Mark, let's talk about the, uh, the the Victory Moon. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, a horse that's very close to your heart. Uh, in fact, uh, to a large extent, really, was the, the horse that he opened the door in Dubai, didn't he? Well, you did ultimately between the two. Yeah, of well, yeah. It was it was basically the fact that I had it from me and I needed other, another horse to travel. And along came him, and he looked big, strong, um, and a dirt type of horse. So. Yeah, you know, when, when one looks back on those decisions, it's it's funny how the stars align, you know. It could it could well have not gone. It was a syndicate. It, it went down to the vote. I think there was only sort of maybe one vote in favour or one or two votes in favour of him travelling. Others wanted to stay at home. But be that as it may, it was a life-changing experience for everybody that was involved, most definitely for me. And um, also, you know, set South African racing on a on a different path. Uh, changed everybody's world. You're so right. Changed everyone's world. I mean, uh, South Africa suddenly on the map. Who's this guy in Dubai? You know, they couldn't fathom it out. And, and there you were just setting uh, all of their, their race courses ablaze. And Victory Moon was such a champion in himself. Let's talk about this Philly, this Philly Sparkling Water, Mark. I mean, she came back. She won her last start. The conditions race, she, she does appear, excuse the pun, weighted to win if, on, on the conditions of the race. And... Um, I would assume you, 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 you're you looking towards the end of the month with her. Am I right about that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. She's come back a stronger filly from what she was at three. She was she was above average three-year-old filly, but she was always well below a wall of Athena. Um, and, you know, if you look at her form lines, where she ran second, third, some of them are hell of a good runs with with the third horses well back. And, you know, so there's, there's a lot, of, lot to suggest she's a good filly. She's definitely a better filly than she was at three. Um, she's quite well in at the weights, obviously, Saturday, uh, being the conditions race that it is. Um, with the Summer Cup, obviously, the long-term mission with her. Uh, she must be a big runner Saturday. You know, I know it's, it's a second run, and, you know, sometimes I can bounce on you. But um, she was quite fit for the first run, and she seems to have come on. Mm. Okay, I'm going to bring the guys in. Dar Darren, let me come to you. Yeah, sparkling water. Uh, sparkling water. I always thought this filly was going to be a much better four-year-old. Uh, she showed uh, quality uh, three-year-old form, you know, behind War of Athena and the Oaks and that sort of thing. But being signed by Silvana out of Espermanti, um, we're going to see the best of this filly this season. Um, I was impressed with her comeback run um, when she won over the 1,450-meter trip. And now she bounces up to 1,800, more, more suitable distance with only 50 kilos on her back. I think she's going to take a lot of beating this filly. So she'll be my first choice. And then I'm hoping second base can bounce back to best. He's had the two comeback runs. Uh, he should be cherry ripe for this run. Uh, he's run some top races on the standside track. He ran second of a course and distance in the SA Classic, two lengths of Mal Moose. And on those sort of performances, he's got to be on the short list. So I make second base my second choice. And then the dark horse in the race I made was Matterhorn. Um, he's going to love the standside track. Uh, he's a big galloping type of horse. He'll prefer a little bit further in future, but he might come into the summer cup with bottom weight, so they're taking their chances. And uh, his second run back in Joburg was a little bit flat. Uh, he ran a little bit below par, but I think he's going to bounce back. I think he would have acclimatized now. And or 51 kilos and a good draw, I make Matt on my, Matt on my third choice. Okay. All right. I know you always like second base, but Sparkling Water... We can't ignore, we can't ignore Golden Pheasant. You know, he's a seven-year-old, but he's evergreen. 
Uh, he's found his best form again. He's consistent. He's always thereabouts, and he does hold second base on his last victory. All right. Daryl, what's your take? Uh, Clyde, I've narrowed this race down to two runners. I really like the look of sparkling water. Being by Silvana, Mark's, uh, Mark's uh, comments that she's, she's getting better uh, as she strengthens up. And, and she comes into this race best weighted. So she ticks all the right boxes. And uh, I just want to touch on something, Clyde. Uh, the Phillies and Mayors have done quite well in this race in the past. Um, Mark won it with taking the piece. Taking the piece carried 53 and a half on that occasion. I think Johan also won it with a filly called, or a mayor called Girl on the Run. But taking the piece won with 53 and a half. Yeah, we've got sparkling water with only 50 kgs to shoulder. Surely, with that postage stamp weight, she must be very, very hard to beat over here. Um, and then, uh, obviously, I make the danger flying carpet, Clyde. He's got 51 to shoulder. I thought that was a cracking comeback. Um, they tried him with the blinkers last time out. He has got enough pace to go forward. And just look at that course and distance run to Bingwa at level weights. That's eye-catching. So I think the bottom weights of here, the race lies between flying carpets and sparkling water with 50 kgs to shoulder. Okay, it's quite interesting the way they priced up to 22 to 10 and 12 to 1. Johnny, uh, you want to you wanna give us your version on how you see this victory moon mapping out? Yeah, Cloud, I think, you know, in my part, with no disrespect to anybody, I think it's quite a weak renewal when I have a look at horses like Socrates, who won in 2019, and obviously alluding to, uh, you know, what, what Daryl said, taking the piece. We've seen Dio Javente win this race. We've seen Smungy Smungy win this race. You know, I have to feel, without being a little bit biased to, to, to Mark, that, you know, if we believe something like a uh, horse like Sparkling Water is going to, you know, be a contender in the Summer Cup and be able to finish in the top four, she should absolutely pulverize the field of that weight. I have to respect second base just on what I thought of the horse early on in his career, but I'm also quite aware of the fact in terms of, of, of how well-weighted Asterix is against second base, uh, you know, on, on one of their previous runs. Also, the interesting part to me about Asterix is what seems to have improved um, a hell of a lot more since they've uh, raced this horse more handily. So, Kind of something I'd look out for. But yeah, all in all, listen, uh, from a bias point of view, uh, I'm really hoping Mark wins this race. In, you know, victory moon stakes. We can put the Betway blanket over the horse in the winner's enclosure and that will end a fantastic day uh, on a Betway Saturday. Betway Saturday, absolutely. He may well do this, the same in the eighth race because, Mark, can we, can we put our head down El Sakit? Yeah, look, he's coming back from a break. The, the Phillies actually got him at the weights, uh, Johan Spilly. Um, I can't think of a name. The name escapes to me. Yeah, you know, with the with the uh, with the allowance that the Phillies get in those plate races, he was unlucky last time. I thought um, he's a, yeah, he's obviously a runner. A bit of rain will help. Uh, there might just be a little question mark on his fitness. I had to give him a bit of a break. You know, he's not a great moving horse. He has his issues. So he had quite a bit of time off after his last run. Um, I've done as much as I can with him at home. Took him to Turfentine to give him a gallop. But, um, you know, there's always that little question mark about um, ring rustiness. But, you know, a lot of the sprinters get away with it. Um, but as I say, healthy respect for Jan's Philly. Uh, I think she's good, very good. And she's obviously at the weights, favours her. Yeah. Yeah, Riverstown, that's his third choice at 72. And they're betting 10 to 1 bar those, uh, just those three runners. And it's his handicap debut. It's not his handicap debut. It's at the penalty he got when he ran second. Mm -hmm. You know, he obviously got a very big penalty. We were hoping we could win that and took the chance with the penalty. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, it didn't happen. So, you know, it's a different ball game now. Yeah, you run off the 120. Okay, well, um, I, I'm interested to, to, to find out or that we know that you've taken him to, all the way to Turfetine for the gallop. I mean, I think that's that's a lot of confidence for me too. Um, Daryl, uh, how have you summarised the final leg of the pot? Clyde, looking at the betting and looking at the form lines, you'd be surprised to see Elsa Keat favourite because Celestial Love, like Mark mentions, she holds him quite comfortably. She beats him by five lengths and she's better off at the weights. What a filly to own. I mean, uh, super consistent. Uh, I expect another ball string from her. And uh, she seemed like she could be quite generous at the price because she holds the favorite. 
But in saying that, Al Sakit, since he's been gelded, I don't know if Mark thinks he's come on since he was gelded and he's a different horse because that was when he was a colt that they met. And his form since he's been gelded is just wow. I mean, last time out, they gave him a chance from a very wide draw. He flew up. Um, so, you know what? I'm, I'm not willing to separate them. I think it's going to be a great race. And I've thrown, thrown both of them into the pick six. Okay. Darren? I've been really impressed with Celestial Love. You know, this filly's really got gears. Um, you'll see how she strengthens up through the race from the 400 to the finish. She just finds another gear, another gear, another gear. Um, she has had the rest. Uh, she hasn't run since the 1st of May. So it'll be interesting to see if she, she'll need the run or not. But she definitely uh, is on the short list of my, my runners. I thought the value lay with Battle Force. Uh, now, he's a grade one winner. He won the Golden Horseshoe, um, the Golden Horse Sprint. Yes, he carried 52 kilos, but he was a three-year-old. Uh, he still lost both shoes at the start. And um, he's drawn on the stand side track, a stand side of the course. And I think that's a big advantage here. He likes to run from a handy position and then he finds another gear late. So I thought um, for place punters, I thought Battle Force, uh, if you can get 15 to 10 a place, I thought that was good value. And then also Keat, uh, a cracking last effort from a wide draw in the Mercury. Um, he did get a penalty. So his ratings 120 now, but he really does look classy. I wouldn't look too much into that form line behind Celestial Love. I don't think that was his run. And he did prove that afterwards that he's a better horse than that. So I think uh, also Keith, Celestial Love, not too much separating them and battle force as the value in the race. Okay. All right. So it, is a, it, does, it does appear to be one of those races that uh, finds its a way um, that could be open. I, I think that al Keith is... You're going to see uh, uh, he made his best on Saturday. Irfan's boy is favourite, the ninth race to win five to two at the moment. Who's that star? Second choice at five to one and six love lies at 13 to two. Bethel, Mark, they've priced you up at 10 to one at the back after winning that last start. Uh, just tell us a little bit about the son of water winter. Um, he's improving, club, but I don't like where he's drawn. You know, I'm with the guys. I don't like inside doors at turpentine down the straight, and especially not once it's rained. For some reason, um, unless you can hug that inside rail, but then you're going to be detached from the field. Um, I, think it, I think it sort of drains away from the outside rail down towards the middle and inside, and therefore that ground gets a little stickier. So yeah, he's a long shot, and he deserves to be. Uh, he's got a place chance. Uh, he's drawn on the outside. Uh, um, he's actually not bad. This also, I mean, you, you can you can follow him after Saturday when he, when he gets a decent draw. Uh, he was a little shin so after his maiden win. I was I was surprised he had he took so long to win his maiden, but it looks like he's a thousand twelve hundred meters. Okay. All right. Well, that's interesting that you summarise him that way. The, let's get the opinion quickly. Johnny, you looked at the final leg of the pick six. I'll bring you in first, and then we'll talk to Darren. And Darren will wrap up the the the, the, uh, up the forecast of Saturday. Yeah, I think, Clyde, I think it's quite a competitive race. I think, you know, what I do recall, Irfan's boy, when uh, coming back, obviously, from Scottsville, there was a fortune of money for, for him that day, and uh, he was touted to be a pretty good thing on that day. I think the two and a half kilos off is going to be a big help. It is third run after a rest. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, took a place in a, he took his place in a, in a Merit 96 uh, last time. Yes, off 52 kilos. Got a decent type of draw. Um yeah, but barring that, I think that, um, yeah, the, 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 you know, you, you literally could get anything could win. You know, I think a horse like who's that star, I think you, I've always got to respect a, a binder horse when Kumalo's on it. Um, yeah, but for me, it's Irfan's boy or just about anything. Yeah, I think, I think Darren, you're quite big on Irfan's boy, yeah, aren't you? Well, that's actually my insure bet for my insure tip for the day. Okay. Um, I think he's going to be cherry ripe for this race. You know, he ran third in a 96 handicap last time behind quite a trip. And on the strength of his form behind good traveler at Scottsville, um, he, he's got a, a touch of class about him. Compared, I thought he had the edge on this field. And the two and a half kilos off his back is going to help. He's drawn six. Um, Rachel Venick is a very good rider. She's actually quite strong in a finish. Um, and I'm making my first choice. Um, it's wide open for second. You've got horses like King's Road that show plenty pace, also claimed two and a half kilos. Clinton Binder for stables in form. And then the stable companion, who's that star? He's drawn hard up on the outside. 
and he drops back to a thousand meters, which I think is going to suit. Uh, Finder and Zala is the best of the rest to me. Um, also from the Clinton Binder stable. But I'm pretty bullish about Irfan's boy that he'll pull off the ninth race. Okay, that's at five to two, the value there. Insure bet, don't forget. Daryl, what's your take on the last? Um, Clyde, favorite or the field, and for that reason, I've won the field. I'm looking for the upset in my last leg of the pick six. Just two I want to touch on. Who's that star? Uh, shows plenty of plays. Back up the, up the straights. I think he could bounce back to his best. And then Bronco Blitz, back in a five furlong. I'm expecting improvement from him. Okay. Any price Broncos, boy? Uh, yeah, he's uh, double figures. And if he happens to win, I'll be smiling. If I'm okay. in the, going into the last league of the pick six, if I'm still alive. Michael, uh, just to quickly, uh, before you go, I just want to ask you about, the, you've got that other runner early on, Golden Spoon, that filly in the handicap. Uh, last start, obviously not striding out, but I see she's back at an 84. She's claiming the four kilos. She's back at a rating when she last won, I think. So you, you, you give her a chance in the third, Golden Spoon? Yeah, look, I, I don't know what happened last time, honestly. I, I was I left scratching my head. So let's hope uh, young Zuma can steal it for us. Okay. Your best on the day now, sparkling water. Is it fair to, is it is it fair to say that she's your best runner on the day? Sparkling water. Yeah, I'd I'd say Clyde. You know, i I'm definitely yeah. Okay, so what you what happened? What you're doing differently now? All of a sudden, everything's come well in the last uh, six weeks. Uh, you get up earlier. You go to gym at night. What's uh, what's happening? Where have you been? Where have you been the last twenty five years, Clyde? Have you uh, <laughs> someone take cut the cataracts out of your eyes or what? <laughs> I'm glad to see it's back to where you, you're back at your best. So don't leave out the mark the, the cog stable. You do so at your own peril. There's that weighted to win number. Mark, I hope you've joined us already. Just a quick look at Darren's play. You know, I want to write these numbers down. Darren, you can take us through what your pick six is and what the guys should do with the rest of their bets. Uh, I'm taking my chances with Bard of Avon. That's my only bank in the pick six. It works out to 1,080 rand full or 108 rand for 10%. And then my insure bet for the day with Betway is Irfan's boy. Uh, he was trading at 28 to 10. Uh, he's now two to one. I'm not sure what they will offer on insure bet, but at least your money's safe if he runs second or third. Okay, so part of Avon, and we're going 108 rand spent on the pick six. Uh, just a quick look, Daryl, you can take us through. No best bet from you, Daryl, tomorrow, eh? No, I'm catching the pick six, Clark. Um, played the safe route. It is quite costly, so take a percentage thereof. Uh, my value bet for the day, and I'm certainly going to be taking some places and backing him to run second on Betway. That comes in fly, uh, in the seventh flying carpet. I think he's only got one horse to beat in the filly of sparkling water. So I do believe he represents the value. I can tell you that uh, this, this slide hasn't missed the last two weeks in a row now. And that's the best bet from Darren and the best bet from Daryl. The best from Darren is part of Avon. The value bet is flying carpet. That's to win at 12 to 1. So you probably get 22 to 10 a place if you want to go places. And the insure bets that both like are in the ninth race, Irfan's boy, just to make sure you get that stake. I'm going Bard of Avon as well um, and insure it if you need to. Just a quick look. Uh, Mal Moose and Desert Miracle, Mike, whilst you're with us, we've got you uh, in that slide. I mean, she's so, so impressive. I said the other day that she's got to be something special in the manner that she moves. And I don't want to even dare compare it to the best that you've had in your in your stable in the past because you've had so, so many good ones. But th does she go Cape Phillies, Guineas next? Is that where you go to with her now? Yeah, she has to, Clyde. It's the obvious one. Um, I, yeah, look, I agree with you. She's exciting. And, you know, you, you always want to compare to others. Um, she's still going to win a Phillies, Guineas. She's still going to win a Group 1 before we can start getting a little excited. She does excite me in the morning. It's been a while since I've, I've, I've seen a filly or a horse for that matter that can do what she does on the track in the mornings. But And she's bringing it to the race course. But anyway, look, you know, she's got a... Unfortunately, it's a long journey down there and everything has to go your way. Um, we've done it before with lesser fillies, to be honest. And um, let's hope everything goes our way. She's... She's an exciting filly, yeah, that's for sure. What, what's your what's your plan with her, with Cape Town? Are you taking a few and staying there for a while? Are you going to go in and out? What's your what's the plan? Yeah, look, Clyde, it's a major aggravation um, with the sore sickness. But anyway, look, let me let me not go down that road. Okay. Um, I, I don't enjoy staying down there. Uh, a lot of the some horses thrive 
a lot of them get sick. Um, I think the right way to do it, if you wanted to do it, was to go early and be there for three or four weeks before you actually run, run again. Because we have found when you raid in and you run, run again, not all of them, quite a high percentage though, flatten out on you. For whatever reason, I think it's a lot to do with acclimatization and changing blood pictures uh, in the horses. So it's very hard because I'd love to have a crack at the Queen's Plate with this filly. Uh, but that means she's got to stay down there. So, and I'm going to be opening my backside up if if we do stay down there. So it's 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 a t- it's a tough one. Um, anyway, you know, listen, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Let's hope we have no um, no aggravation with her. Oh, that's interesting. So Queen's Plate over the pad- over the paddock stakes. That's a yeah. That's a, so she she is that good. Eh? I mean, she is really incredible. Well, let's hope it all works out for you and, and goes to plan. Yeah, you I think it? she's a she's a proper miler. You, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mike, the, so the, the Mal Moose, I mean, that on a mission mile, they set the pace, it was slow, it was the date you saw. It perhaps was to the undoing of a lot of, a lot of the, the, the horses in the race. Um, Bingwa got that spring on him and got away uh, because he was up there with him. Um, he, he, was, he didn't disgrace himself, Mal Moose. I mean, uh, he was, what was he beating? Three lengths at the line, etc. cetera. Uh, how did you find that? Yeah, he's he's still a bit like, soft, Clyde. Like, no, he's come back well. He was still a bit soft. Uh, he was three deep. Um, he didn't have an ideal passage at all. I was a little disappointed in in, in the ride from Gavin. Um, the last thing I wanted was a horse that needed the run to be sitting three deep. They went very slow. Uh, it didn't help. But, you know, first run after a rest, Dory's horse was really fit, well, well conditioned. You know, you, you go back and look at it at the weights. He had a lot of horses beat that horse. And, uh, you know, probably the right fit horse on the day won it. Um, so, He's going to have to up his game. I, you know, it's, it would have been nice yeah. to have two runs going into the summer cup, but it wasn't that way. We had to give him a nice rest after the triple crown. He had, he had had a hard, he had had a hard season. Um, but he'll be, he'll, you know, he'll bounce back. There's no doubt about it. He's much better over ten furlongs too. He's not really a miler. You know, when he he won the triple crown, he scraped time in the mile. It's not his game. He wants a bit further. Okay. All right, so we're still uh, on a mission with him into the Summer Cup, no doubt about that. Guys, anything for Mark before we let him go on anything in particular, Darren and Daryl, uh, from your side? No, um, it was just fantastic to have him on the show, and I look forward to spending some time with him tomorrow. Yeah, it's, um, yeah I look it's forward an, to tomorrow. It's an honour to have Mike DeCock on the show. You know, the greatest trainer, one of the greatest trainers this country's ever seen, and he, he, what he did for uh, South African racing on in, an international stage um, was unbelievable. He really put us on the map. Uh, obviously, starting with uh, Victory Moon, uh, horses like JJ the Jet Plane beating. I mean, horses, um, a lot of people uh, say that we can't compete on a world stage. They obviously have a short memory because horses like JJ the Jet Plane beat the best sprinter in the world at the time. Lizard's Desire got touched off in the World Cup and then beat the World Cup winner in Singapore. Uh, Variety Club rated one of the highest I- in the world at this stage. Um, Iridescence, uh, she didn't be- beat much in Dubai, but then she beat one of the UK's best ever fillies, Weezer board in Hong Kong by a short head. Uh, ran second in the Farmer Stakes in the UK grade one, uh, second in a grade one in USA. Um, we, we really have had um, quality horses come from this country and compete at the highest level. Um, not forgetting JPEG, Soft Falling Rain, National Currency, who took on Silent Witness, who was going for, what, 17 in a row. Mm. Uh, Horse Chestnut, first time on dirt after a long break after the South African compa- campaign. Um, yeah, top class training, top class horses from this country. Yeah, it certainly has. Thank uh, you, Darren. That's uh, thanks very much. It's, it's, it's fantastic to be with you guys, and I really appreciate the the kind words. Thank you. And Mark, Johnny will travel with you, eh? Because you've got Australia set up, you've got Dubai set up, so Betway goes with you wherever you go, right? Hundred <laughs> percent. Betway, we, we, we're married. <laughs> <laughs> Stay married. Um, Thanks, Johnny. Thanks for coming on the show, Johnny. Nice to have you. Thank you very much. Thanks, eh? guys. Keep up the good work. Eh? Much Thank appreciated. You. Thank, you. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, yeah. guys. All Cheers. Well done, guys. Cheers. Eh? Bye. Bye.
Eso. 